or Baba, like they're all like a little bit still on a little bit of support, you know, this JD is like right on that ledge. I think like JD, you got NVAX, Sava, W, these are all stocks that got like the clean breakdowns and that'll kind of go um, a uh, good way. <laughs> so let's just go back into the indexes here. So we've had a nice kind of three day pullback. We're getting into a little bit of support. So, you know, we do have like a longer term support, but the short term price action is not giving us really any indication yet that we're in for any kind of bounce. So, you know, before we try to really bounce, right, we'd want to see a smaller term time frames, some sort of, right, look that a reversal is in the cards before, you know, you try to play it back up into the range. I suspect for a good chunk of the year, we're going to be stuck in a range. And we've been talking about this really all year, right? I suspect we're going to be in a range for most of the year, just a really volatile range, you know, where we have these huge squeezes and then huge fades and, you know, so on and so forth. I do think the worst of the kind of bear market trading is over, but, you know, getting back down into the bottom of the range and back up to the top of the range, it could be a big volatile range, which is still really tradable. But, you know, at this point, like, you know, all the news has been digested. But every time we do get hit with news, right, we kind of start to roll back over and then everybody knows about it. We start to squeeze back as things get cheap and so on and so forth. And we've seen this kind of in 2015, 2016, where you can, can get those really volatile ranges. I think there'll be some good action today, you know, with a flat open, like really anything's on the table. What we'll have to do is just kind of watch yesterday's, watch yesterday's lows. You know, the market often, especially on Fridays, does like to dip under the previous day's lows and kind of suck in shorts and then they kind of squeeze it back, you know, squeeze it back higher. So that'll be something that we'll have to watch is like, do we start to build around yesterday's lows under it? Or do we do a shake and bake where, right, we rip down and then say, fuck you and then come back over. That's, you know, that's probably the, if you want to long something, that's the ideal scenario because those usually start the best runs uh, in the market, the shake and bake, because, you know, you're catching everybody off the guard and then you got to go back the other way. Uh, but who knows? Like so far, we're not seeing any indication that you can see the spies in kind of a little bit of a jumble here too. And then the IWM was so close, so close, to, right? Coming out of some ranges and then it just gave it back up. And so you can see here, right? We've got like a much longer term range developing. If we look at market breadth of the last, you know, so many days, you know, we are seeing a little bit of a, a rollover in breadth, but all, more importantly, right, where there's been very few breakouts the last three, four days, you know, like we were at 194, like these are very, very low, then we have an increase in breakdowns. So, you know, we have a, a slight shift in ratios and market breadth, and that is something we'll have to keep track of, because you know, even when the market is like pulling back, you really should see more breakouts in like 70 or 80. Um, you know, 8,000, 9,000 stocks or whatever it is out there. You know, you do have like, you do need to see a little bit more than that. Let's take a look and see if there's any news plays as Friday is always a good day to just, Friday is always a good day to get you know, your butt smoked out by some small cap stock and, you know, then you can live your life in shame. Uh, SST, is this the... You see, like this stuff, you can't really play. It's not going to have liquidity. Um, SSTs gap it up, but like this thing got smoked out a couple days ago. So, like any kind of gap in this, this is what we call like a sucker's gap, where you know people see it and say like, okay, here we go. But like after this kind of pull, like these are all tend to be suckers gaps. Like you got to leave those alone. Um, S SBFM, like you know what, this is actually held up pretty well. Like if you're, is it fucking Thursday? Good lord. <laughs> Did anybody else know that? <laughs> We've got a little bit of bender lately. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's not even Friday. All right. Well, thank you, Jason, because I would have been literally wrapping it up in about 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I try to make a couple good trades and wrap this thing up. <laughs> Hey, it's summertime, baby. It'll be like this till October for me. All right, SPCM, junk. CNDT, junk, 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 junk. 
HPQ, but I got a gap up on uh, Berkshire Hathaway investment. You know, that's kind of interesting. Like when they reported the one on Oxy, the thing started to fly that day. Um, yeah, when they reported the one on Oxy, they, it started to fly that day. You know, will it do like something similar? We don't necessarily know. Um, that'll be a little bit, a um, little bit of a tricky one. This stock just sucks to fucking trade. That's like the big issue on it. I actually do think we put it on the watch list if we need a long because, you know, these kind of investment uses have been working. You know, we saw this with Oxy that day where like kind of flat open and then it just was bam and it just took off that day on the investment news um, this is a little bit much thicker stock than oxy was and it has much less range but you never know like there might be something we need to play in um bba i see this is like a sucker's gap here and this name is epic i wish it would have held just so we could trade it like big bear holdings it just makes you sound like a man right like, fuck it me deep in big bear holdings. <laughs> That's an incredible name. Velo, see, not as cool name. Oh, wow, Velo 3D. Not really that cool. Hey, DDL, by the way, for those of you guys that like these little guys, you know, watch this kind of, there's a mark here from, you know, two days ago and yesterday, it's been holding up. So what you can consider yesterday is like an inside day where you had like a real narrow range day from the previous day this usually this type of stuff has been working on these little guys and you got a kind of a range on the daily here too like if you go back here that's probably something that's probably worth the goose in a gander you know if you let you're into these little guys if you're gonna do it like that's the one you know that's the type of setup that you'd want to be doing it on and junk 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 yes junk You know, like something like this AMC, if the market does, you know, get back into it, you're in like two levels of two levels of breakout here, right? So you had this like kind of base breakout over here, ran a 200 day moving average, pulled back into it. You know, that's probably something if the market started to rip, that's the kind of speculative name that's had like a deep enough pullback that you would have like a really good RR on this. I mean, really, <clears throat> if you found the right intraday setup, I mean, you could be risking like 20, 30 cents to, you know, possibly get yourself into, get yourself into. <laughs> oh, not bad. What do you think? I do like it. I do like it. You know, if we need, you know, if we need a bounce, that's something to be good. Uh, one thing to kind of be mindful of is like the margin sucks on that damn stock, at least at Isla. So you can't really, you can't get knee deep into it, but whatever. Like that's, you know, that's going to be the nature of the game. Let's take a look and just kind of dig into some shorts here that I think could be working. Um, JD's got a big level over here at 57.75. Let's go into like an hour chart here. So if you go, this is, you know, this thing's been on a ledge for the last so many days. So, right, you had that kind of delisting news come out, and then it's just been sitting there for a month. Fuck, we've been trying to trade this thing for a month, bouncing these fucking things, right? <laughs> we got a level here right around 57. I'll go like 57, 57.25. You know, if you start the prairie dog under that thing, start looking for some intraday setups. Um Start looking for some intraday setups around there. And then you've got some room. See this gap here? Like you've got really, you've got like a decent amount of downside on that gap that you could really, you know, make some chatters on. Like that's a good, I mean, that's a good God-fearing Christian setup right there. Like that's something to be proud of right there. Ooh, that's nice. Add that in. And look, there's some other ones that are like having some big breakdowns here. Uh, NVAX has got the big breakdown. Saba's got the big breakdown. Um, w has a big breakdown here. One test, two test, three test. It is a little bit loose on the nine. Um, this does have a big ATR on it. So if it does cook it out, like it's got room to fall too, right? 
And fuck Wayfair anyways. This is nice, you know. Now, my only worry on this is it's already down three down days. So, like, today would be day four. So, I wouldn't marry into this thing. But, like, you do have the breakdown there, right? Like, AMD, you do have a, a breakdown coming down on this one. Now, this one is a little bit more oversold than W. So, right, because you've really been down, like, six, seven days in a row. So, I'd really be careful. Like, I'd more be leaning on trying to, if the market goes, I'd be more leaning on trying to bounce this one off the 100 just due to the fact that when you get extended and you get into the breakdown spot, like you usually, right, have a more, the RR is better on trying to, on trying to bounce it. Now, if it tightens up for a day or two, then that'd be totally different. Uh, I think we need a bounce. Like this, the video is probably oversold enough coming in from 291 to 240. It's 60 points on 300. It's down like 20%, give or take. Um, sitting near the 200 day moving average that, that could be worth a gander. If the market bounces, this one, you can play both ways. Cause frankly, it also looks like it could just flush out from here. You know, that's the nature of kind of some of these plays, but I think that'll be, that's going to be a good one to kind of take for a bounce too. If we see it, um, right. Like if we need a bounce, like this one's holding on the 20 SMA, I think that one could be fine. But frankly, like all these kind of things are, all these things can be played both ways. When the vol when the volatility increases, you know, we'll have ourselves. But watch this 20 SMA. As long as this, if this can hold today and we shake and bake on the cues, then this is like, you know, we've had a lot of, we've had some good success trading this name. Like it's just got that range that you need. I roll with this bad boy uh, if we get the bounce. Today will be tricky because, you know, the market is not showing any signs of bouncing, but that's usually when the rips start. You know, they can come out of nowhere. We really need to see if we kind of shake and bake, right, under yesterday's level. That's the only way I'm trying to get long. Like, if it breaks back under and breaks back over, that's, like, the best long setup. Otherwise, you know, we very rare, we very rare, we very well could just bleed out here. I mean, did Baidu Kitchen downgrade? I didn't even see it today. Let me see. I didn't see it on the wire. I'll have to relook. Um, Tiva, hey, hey, Peter, what's up? Let me look at Tiva, brother. Hey, so this is nice, but like it's already up like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. These type of stocks are like more like swing trades, you know, where like you know you can't day trade this right because it only has a thirty-eight cent ATR. ATR is average true range. Yeah, you know, so you can't really day trade something that moves around 30 cents, you know, 30 cents a day. Cause you know, even if you ripped it and caught like the meat of the move and got 15 cents out of it, like unless you have 38,000 shares of it, like, you know, that 15 cents is not gonna, is not gonna get you the cocaine and hookers. And that's really what it's all about, right? <laughs> this is probably, and uh, if you want to swing trade it, like you, it's going to need a pullback or something along that end. Um, It's something to probably keep an eye on, but not necessarily anything that like you would be like, fuck, like I got to buy this today. If you're already in, then just, you know, rip and ride, slip and slide that thing till, till it goes. Let's see on the downside if we got anything juicy here. Fucking rad. Right percent that's gonna to be tough to chase down on a six dollar stock hey you know neg had a big run yesterday this this could be a red to green scenario uh if the market holds like i'd actually add that for the red to green like this looks like it just maybe starting a run you can see the volume accumulation on this bad boy it does trade a little bit thin but it had 16 million shares of volume yesterday it trades thin but it should have enough liquidity uh, as long as you don't go commando on it where things could happen. Uh, I'd only be really trying to rip and ride this thing if, you know, everything else, you know, sets up. But I do like that overall look. And this sofa is just grinding, jump, 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 jump. Good. Hey, Rama, what's up, baby? What's going on? Where you been? 
Good. Uh, Andy, let me look at DG, brother. You know what? This could be. I think DG, um, this had a really nice trend on it. Dollar General. Dude, you had good range on this, like eight, nine points. Um, this Lily had relative strength. You know, this thing was up about 10 points. Good liquidity. I think DG, um, Lily, like both of those, you could, both of those you can be playing. Uh, you can keep playing them. You know, they won't be, the other good thing is like, you know, these kind of stuff, they, they're not too wild. So you got to be, um, you know, you can get yourself a good, good rip on these things. I like, I like, I like. Who? Cool. I think that's it. You could do SBFM too. All right, let's have ourselves let's have ourselves a little bit of fun today. Uh, AMT, let me look, brother. You know what? This does. It's a little bit light on the liquidity, but I think yeah, you could probably you could roll with something like this against the two hundred. Um, make sure, make sure like your. You make sure you just have a good intraday setup. I think you'll be okay. I like. Go for it. Cool. Let's go have some fun today, folks. Let's try to make quick work out of this thing. Two hours. We get the heck out of here. I'll be in the boom, boom room. <laughs>